So mass to mass stoichiometry this time. So as always in every stoichiometry problem, we are always given our balanced chemical equation in which I highlighted here the important coefficient or the numbers before the chemical formula that are very useful when we do the calculation, especially on the mole ratio part. Okay, So there will always be a given balanced chemical equation here. Then after that, it will be followed by a statement of the problem, which we will read right now. So the problem, the first problem we're going to do is this one. If you start with 3.45 grams of carbon, how many grams of iron will you get? So I highlighted the 3.45 grams of carbon, which is our given, and then we are solving the grams of iron. Now, if you do not know what iron is, again, the substances can be found in the given balanced chemical equation. You see, the, this is the first substance, Fe2O3. The second is C, which is, we know that that is carbon. The third substance is Fe, and we know that Fe is the one that is iron. So now we find that iron is really Fe here. And of course, the last one is CO2, which is not mentioned in our first problem. So therefore, this problem that we just read is about carbon and Fe. So these two substances are the ones we're going to focus. And then after the problem, you also see that the molar mass of carbon is this one. Here, so you're given the mm of C and the molar mass also of iron, which is this one. So for the mass to mass stoichiometry, you have an idea already that we're going to use molar masses twice for the two substances that we are given in the problem. Okay? So that's the hint. So here, you see that in our solution part, you see a long outline of the problem. So the very beginning will be writing our given mass to be followed by the molar mass of the given, to be followed again by the mole ratio, and then the third one is another molar mass, but the molar mass we're going to put is the one that we are required to solve. And finally, we can get the answer from that. Okay? So now let's go ahead and follow this outline to solve this problem. So our given mass, and do not confuse this with the molar mass, okay? Molar mass is not the given mass. The given mass is the one in the statement itself. And you only know that there is one number there. So obviously, your 3.45 grams carbon is our given mass. Okay? So let's copy that down. 3.45 grams carbon. So we're going to put it as C. 3.45 grams carbon. Okay? Next, we're going to multiply this and we're going to put it inside the parentheses with a line there. And let's just put all the parentheses for all the three conversion units that we need to put for this calculation all the way to the end. Okay? And then you will put an equal sign. So this is an emphasis that we need to do all these three things and fill it out. Okay? So the first one we're going to fill in is the molar mass of the given. Our given substance is C. And then we're going to find molar mass of C. Okay, it's here, mm of C. So be careful what number you're using. The first one is of the given substance. Our given substance is C, so we're going to follow the given molar mass for C, which is 12.01 grams per mole. Now, where are we going to put the, the, the grams and the mole? Always look at your given. Your given unit is a G. It's a mass. And we need to cancel it out. So mathematically, that G, for this to be canceled out, we have to have another G below so that we can cancel it out. So in this part here, for the molar mass of the given, the G value should be at the bottom. And then we copy its numerical value which is 12.01. And as always, the partner of our gram in all molar masses should 
always be one mole and that won't change it's always one mole there so you see the gram is below and the one mole is on top and don't forget that this is the molar mass of C so you put C there and a C here the substance has to be the same for the molar mass part and for this we can already see that the G carbon and the G carbon gets to cancel out okay that's the reason why the format of molar mass for this part is this way so that the G carbon cancels out with the G carbon in the given. And so this style here won't change. For this part, the one mole is always on top and the G is always down. Next, we're going to go to the mole ratio in which again, to refresh ourselves, mole ratio comes from the coefficients in the balance chemical equation which are the numbers that we see and we know that from the beginning when we analyze the problem we're going to focus on C and Fe because these are the ones mentioned in the problem so this is where we will focus on but where will we put the 3 and the 4 for the mole ratio the same concept as what I have always told you that the one at the bottom is the same as the given substance. The given substance is C. So therefore, the one at the bottom should also be a C. And the one at the top is the one we're solving for. And the one we are solving for is iron. So Fe will be on top. That doesn't change. The concept of mole ratio is the same. The top is what we're solving for. The C is the same as the given substance so that we can cancel it out. And then we attach the coefficient values for Fe. The coefficient is 4. So therefore, this will be 4 moles. For carbon, the coefficient is 3. So therefore, that is 3 moles there. Okay? So if you look at mole C and mole C can be canceled out when we did the mole ratio part. So in every conversion factor, there's always something that we can cancel out top and bottom. And now we're off for the very last part. The very last part is the molar mass of the substance that is required. And the required is what we're solving for. That's what it means. So there is another molar mass that we have not used, which is the one with Fe. And Fe is the one that we are required to solve. So Fe's molar mass is 55.85. And so obviously that is what we will use on this last part here. But the question is, where will we place the gram and where will we place the one mole? Now, if you look at this uncancelled unit, which is moles Fe. To be able to cancel out moles Fe, therefore, we have to have another mole Fe at the bottom, right? So that we can cancel that out. So therefore, the gram has no other place but to be on top. And the gram, the value is 55.85. And then the grams is for the Fe, so we still put Fe there. And this mole right here, this mole right here, again, because this is molar mass, it will always be valued as 1. Nothing more, nothing less. So the gram now is on top, and the 1 mole is below. The reason for that is so that we can cancel out mole Fe and mole Fe right there cancel and then cancel that out and so we're left we're always left with one and canceled unit which is the one that answers the problem so how many grams iron and the and canceled unit is grams iron also so therefore our solution is correct so if you just look at the entire solution here the first molar mass the one mole is on top and the gram is below but the second molar mass, if you notice that, the gram is now on top and the one mole is below. So they have a different style. Okay? So I hope you notice that. 
and the one at the middle is the just the mole ratio which follows the concept that the one below is the same as the substance given and the one on top is always leading to what we're solving. So I hope that you now looked into the, I hope you understand now the entire outline for this mass to mass conversion. And it's time for us to group all the values. We're ready for the calculator. So all the values here, top all the time, and the top should begin with the given. So we have 3.45, then times 1. I'll just emphasize the times 1 there. Then times 4, and then times 55.85. I'm sorry, it doesn't fit anymore. Then divided by... The ones at the bottom, there are three numbers here. That is 12.01 times 3 times 1. Okay? And now we are going to multiply first the top. So please get your calculator and multiply with me. The top is 3.45 times 1, which you can skip, then times 4, then times 55.85. So the top should give you a product of 770.73. Then after you multiply the top, multiply separately the one at the bottom if you're using the ordinary calculator. So let's multiply all the ones at the bottom, which is 12.01 times 3, and you may not do the times 1 anymore. So that's going to be 36. 0, 3 at the bottom. And once you've got the two products for the top and the bottom, now you're going to divide the top divided by the bottom. So 770.73 divided by 36.03 and you'll get plenty of answers. So we will limit ourselves up to the second decimal place. So that's going to be 21.39. No need to round up anything because the 9 is followed by a 1. So that's just going to be 12 point, I mean, sorry, 21. I'm sorry for that. Let me just erase that. So that is 21.13. Okay, so 21.39, sorry, 21.39. And then, the final unit of our final answer will follow the remaining uncancelled unit on top, which is always the case. And so that will be grams Fe. And that grams Fe should match with what is the question all about. So grams Fe, grams Fe. And so we box our final answer for this. So 21.39 grams Fe is the one required by 3.45 grams of carbon. Okay? I mean, that's the one that we will produce. This is the amount of Fe that we will produce from this amount of carbon right here in the problem. So I will now give you the chance to solve number two. It's your chance to solve number two for practice. 